Greetings and welcome back to the channel folks, I am your host Clifton3D. Today I'm excited to dive into a series that I recently binged with sheer enthusiasm. Hmm, <clears throat> maybe. But before I share my thoughts on this incredible show, I want to give a big shout out to someone who deserves it. I'm talking about none other than Matt Rissman, also known as Moth Simpus from the Echo Base Network. This show came into my radar thanks to the recommendation of Matt during one of EBN's live streams. Now let's be real, I love giving him a hard time, but it's all in good fun. We may not always see eye to eye on things, but I do respect him. Much like this show. The show in question is one of the Apple products for all mankind. In a divergent 1969, we get the Red Moon. The moon's surface bears the weight of a Soviet cosmonaut, Alexei Leonov, who marks a historic first for humanity. This momentous achievement sends shockwaves through NASA, shattering morale, but also serving as a catalyst for the resolute U.S. effort to regain lost ground. As the Soviet Union champions diversity by including a woman in their subsequent lunar missions, the United States finds itself compelled to keep pace. This pivotal turn leads to the training and inclusion of women and minorities who were predominantly excluded from the initial chapters of American space exploration. Ronald D. Moore, the creative behind the series, shared an insight into the alternate history for all mankind. He elaborated on the pivotal moment that altered the course of events in the captivating series. Sergei Korolev, often regarded as the father of the Soviet space program, met a different fate in re our reality. Tragically, he passed away during a surgical procedure in Moscow in 1966, and from that point onward, the Soviet moon program struggled for less. In the universe of For All Mankind, this is where history takes a distinctive path. Within this alternate reality, Karlov's narrative embarks on an entirely different trajectory. He survives. Not only does he survive, but he also continues to spearhead the Soviet space endeavors, ultimately emerging as the driving force behind their triumphant lunar landing. Within this alternate dimension, a solitary twist of fate sparks an exhilarating and unforeseen voyage through the realms of space and time, where the potentialities are as boundless as the cosmos itself. The show starts off with an interesting twist. You see people glued to their TVs, watching the moon landing, and you get thrown a curveball when not the Americans step foot on the moon, but the Soviets days before Apollo 11 is set to take off. This is what sets off the entire show, a what-if scenario. At first, I was confused, because the show is set up in a manner that you wouldn't know this twist until it happened. But I enjoyed the first episode, I enjoyed the setup, I enjoyed the premise, and the show had such potential to be something out of this world. Pun intended. I wanted to continue. How would this change in history alternate the world about to unfold? So many interesting twists and turns the show could have taken an exploration of this. What if were indeed boundless? In the first episode, it already sets up future events in the show, and sadly, the writing is on the wall from the very start. However, I looked past it in hopes of good story writing. Moving forward, you got to meet some very great and interesting characters from history. Their portrayal was done in a respectful manner, and I thought the actors did a great job. The good story, the awesome potential, and good characterization was quickly pushed aside for agenda-driven changes. The Soviets put the first woman on the moon shortly after Buzz had a shaky landing on the moon for second place projecting the show into the feminist progressive movement 
and having the evil white men needing to accept or be pushed out by their betters. Girl bosses, despite knowing that even in this alternate universe, feminism and racial issues would not have made such leaps, I continued on. I did my best to push the ridiculousness behind me, because even after the horrible writing inserts, the rest of the story was still captivating. Looking back, I should have stopped it then and there. But the show did have some great moments and psyche possibilities. When NASA put the first manned station on the moon, one of the astronauts had a total breakdown after essentially being stranded on the moon for over 150 days with two others in a cabin no bigger than a normal master bedroom, showing the struggles that were faced and the aftermath of such mental issues on a person. The ideas behind the actual main storyline were good and continue on to the end of season three. Season four will pick up in November of 2023, but they couldn't stop from pushing their politically charged agenda-driven wokeism to the point that one of the female astronauts runs for president, which in of itself is not an issue, and I could see this happening in this universe or even in the real-life universe at this time. She runs on the platform of pushing the space program, their future mission to Mars, and I believe for the sake of the show you are supposed to be rooting for her to win and succeed. But the opposite happens. They made her presidential opponent, Bill Clinton, look like a sane one of the two. He was far more likable, wanting to help the American people, while our hero just wanted to help her Mars mission. Throughout the show, they actually portray the presidents in history in a rather good light, even Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan, which kind of surprised me. The side stories started taking off more and more, pushing the main story to the side. The show no longer felt like a what if, it felt more like watching a telenovela with a small side of actual good storytelling. When in real life, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was implemented, we have a black astronaut, and soon after, the female astronaut president came out of the closet, and suddenly everyone was immediately on board. Well, everyone except for the evil Republicans. In my conclusion, the show had so much potential, and I gave it chance after chance after chance, and I still believe it has potential. But a part of me knows I am being too apologetic to the show. I enjoy the what should be the main storyline. I enjoy seeing the possible struggles of space travel and of future achievements that we now see in real life in SpaceX. And I believe we will see what the future might hold for us moving into season four. This is what interests me. This is what hooks you to the show. Despite all the woke nonsense the show pushes. And if I'm being honest, the show has almost pushed me to drop it entirely. If the trend continues and they take away more of the good storyline for more agenda, they will do it. Sadly, based on everything the show had done so far and pushed, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a trans activism in the next season. And should the show be renewed for season five, they will start to head into the age thing I rather not talk about. At which point I will be firing up a storm against this show on the internet. I truthfully do not know if I would recommend this show to others or tell you to stay away. If you can mentally manage to push the nonsense out of your mind and see the show for what it potentially could be, try it out. If you struggle with that to the point that I do at the end of season three, not sure this show is something you should spend your time on. Ultimately, I give the show a four out of ten. I see the potential. I see the great storytelling within the agenda casing. And if not for the woke BS, the show would easily be an eight out of ten, if not nine out of ten. I truly wish I could be singing its praises as Moth Rissman, 
but I just cannot. I know what the show is, even if I'm fighting tooth and nails. Hey, have you seen this show? Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are. Are you on the same page as I am? Or do you actually enjoy what they've been doing with the show, especially the agenda issues? Now, look, I don't mind if you enjoy this show. That's awesome. Great for you. I mean, kind of. I've been enjoying it, parts of it, but a lot of it is pushing me away. And I'm worried that moving forward, they will push it to a level that I just cannot stand anymore. That being said, let me know down in the comments below if you're going to check this show out on my review or if you're going to be staying away of it. Let me know. Hey, and if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications because, you know, you have to do that so YouTube knows that you actually want to see my content. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for stopping by. Take care.